dedicated to each and every one of you who appreciate a great glass of wine. You know what I mean? It's Monday. Let's raise a glass to the beginning of another week. It's time to unscrew, uncork, or saber a bottle. And let's begin exploring the wine glass. Today, we return to Wine Fabet Street, where the letter of the day is F, and it stands for Frappato. We had the honor of talking with Pietro Russo, head winemaker for Donna Fugata Winery in Sicily. Frappato is a component with Nero Diavola of the island's only DOCG wine, Sarasuelo di Vittoria. We talked about the grape's history, general characteristics, and food pairings, but more importantly, had the pleasure of tasting the incredible wine. Please take a moment of your time to rate and review the podcast. You can do it while you're listening. Those not-so-easy-to-understand algorithms look for new reviews in order to suggest the podcast to other wine lovers. And don't forget to add your email address to our newsletter list on the website to keep up with all things exploring the wine glass. Lancia. Hey everybody, I'm Lori Budd, a UC Davis winemaking program, Spanish wine scholar, Sande service, champagne and Claude de Ron specialist, and a WSET level 2 graduate. You can find Exploring the Wine Glass on all the socials, as well as your favorite podcast catchers. If you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time to swipe, subscribe, rate, and review. Stay in the know about all things wine by visiting my website, exploringthewineglass.com. I promise I'll never tell you what to drink, but I'll always share what's in my glass. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Wine for Bed Street. We are up to the letter F, and we are traveling to Italy today to discuss Frappato. And I, I love when we get to travel through the glass and learn all about the grape varieties. And today we are, uh, we have the honor, privilege of drinking Donna Fugata uh, Frappato. And we have uh, Pietro Russo with us, the winemaker. So thankful that he's taking this time from this crazy season. But welcome to Wine for Beth Street, season three, letter F. We are just rolling on through. We are. We are. So in case you don't know who I am, I am Lori. My husband and I own Dracaena Wines in Paso Robles. I write and podcast under the name Exploring the Wine Glass. I am a WSET level two graduate, UC Davis winemaking graduate, champagne specialist and Cote de Rhone specialist. And I have now officially taken the exam for the Spanish wine scholar and I'm just waiting for those results. So hopefully soon I can say Spanish wine scholar also. <laughs> yes, fingers crossed. And my co-host Debbie. I'm Debbie Giaquindo. I'm known as the Hudson Valley wine goddess. I'm a certified specialist of wine, a wine location specialist in Port and Champagne, and a wine certified sherry wine specialist. I always get that. I have to think of my initials there. Um, I'm author of a book called Tapping the Hudson Valley, Day Trips and Weekend Itineraries, Visiting All the Craft Beverage Producers and Farm Markets and Apple Picking in the Hudson Valley. And I'm partner in a restaurant in North Wildwood, New Jersey called Trio North Wildwood. And we will be open Fridays and Saturdays right now till the end of the year. And I think that about covers it for me. Wonderful. Pietro. Hello, everybody. Thank you. First of all, thank you, Lori and Debbie for inviting me to this, uh, this chat. I'm uh, Pietro Russo, winemaker for Donna Fugata. I come from Sicily, in Marsala, exactly. I studied so uh, I studied enology and uh, so winemaking and uh, viticulture in uh, north of Italy in Conegliano Veneto, and then I I took my degree in uh, in Bordeaux, in France. Uh, I have uh, several uh, harvests in my shoulder. I started at the age of 18, uh, at 18 years old, so now I'm uh, I'm 37. 
Uh, I worked uh, in uh, France several years on so Languedoc, in Bordeaux. I worked also in uh, in uh, in the south of Spain. I worked in in uh, Piedmont, in New Zealand. So different experiences wow. across the world. And uh, and then I came back to Sicily for work. So I came back in uh, in my town, so in my native town. So I'm very happy for this. And uh, one more thing, uh, I'm a student, I'm still a student, so I, haven't, I never stopped to study uh, the wine, because I'm in the program of the Master of Wine. I, oh, wow. I passed uh, the, the, the practical in 19. I passed most of the theory, uh, the stage two in, uh, in 2021, and I'm waiting for my result of uh, my single paper receipt uh, <laughs> that are appearing at the end of October. So again, wow, wow. wow. that is impressive. Right. Very impressive. And I tell you, isn't the wait time almost as stressful as the study time? Like, right? Like you, you, you study, 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 you take the test, you do what you have to do, and then they make you wait so long to get a result. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. But we have, a, 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 on the other side, we have the pleasure to study what we like. Yes. So yeah. we, I know, for for example, preparing the practical was, actually was quite tough because uh, at a certain point you don't uh, enjoy too much the wine when you taste, but once you pass, <laughs> then you start to, again, appreciate it. And now I'm in this, then... We will see what happens uh, <laughs> with the next thing. Well, I will keep our fingers crossed for Thank you also. Yes. Yeah. Hi. So we are here to talk about Frappato, and we have our little video. If I... Uh... Well, welcome everybody to Wine for Bad Street. And we are excited to be talking about Frappato today. Yes. I am I can't wait to taste. I have not tasted it yet. I'm just staring at the glass. Neither have I. So Pedro, Debbie and I, this is our third season of this. And uh, I would say in like season one, oh, how we've grown. But in, se in season one, we would uh, kind of already be drinking by the time we got on. And then we're like, all right, you know what? We're going to not taste until we actually get on and we can, you know, virtually clink glasses and say hello it together. So this will be Let's our go. first clink of frappato. So slancia. Cheers. I know that's not what you say in Italy, in Sicily, but I can't say anything. Else. Chin chin. Chin chin. Mm, wow, that's nice. That's really nice. Oh wow. So, I'm yeah. sorry. I just was like taken aback by how good. Yeah. That is. <laughs> and I love good. being able to drink at ten in the morning and not, you know, say it's a bad thing. <laughs> So moving moving along, um, so Don Fugato was founded in 1983. Can you talk about uh, Giacomo and Gabriella and their wine experience? Because they both came from China Wine. Giacomo and Gabriella uh, were the founder of Don Fugato. Giacomo Morale was a businessman, uh, the sales manager for the, his own family winery. Uh, it was the third generation running the, the Rallo winery that was focused on producing fortified wines at this time. Uh, the opposite, Gabriella was a teacher, an English teacher, that uh, soon decided to move to the managing uh, the family vineyards in Contessa Entellina. So this is, this is the history uh, before to launch the, this new adventure. The adventure started in 83, so in 1983, uh, with their desire to build something different, something unique, uh, focusing on new styles of wine, on fresher style for, for, the, for the period. 
and focusing in lo both local and autochthonous varieties. So uh, they started in Contessa Intellina in uh, 1983 with a very small production, first of all. And then they increased, they have seen uh, the new, the, the, the beginning of the success uh, in the interest for, for their wine, for Sicilian wines. And then they uh, landed in uh, 1989 in Pantelleria where Giacomo already used to work for the family winery. So in 1989, we have the first uh, uh, Passito di Pantelleria, so for, for Dona Fugata. And then, uh, uh, well, we had, um, unfortunately, uh, Giacomo died in 2016, but in the same uh, year, uh, Dona Fugata uh, expanded to other territories in the territory of Etna and the territory of Victoria, because it was uh, his own desire. It was a long history. He was searching uh, since a long time uh, in, uh, in those areas, in those appellations. And uh, finally, in 2016, uh, uh, his sons, uh, Antonio and Jose, have, uh, have understood, have found the right place for, uh, for building a winery in Victoria. And we have purchased also some land and the winery in in Etna. So, so now, so now Dona Fugata is quite uh, covers the most uh, appealing, most compelling appellation of uh, of Sicily and the most uh, interesting and intriguing uh, uh, DOC and terroir of Sicily. And so, now that they've expanded, um, are those? Can you compare and contrast like the why they chose those like what that's what the soil of Etna volcanic right sure. and then how it, what how does that compare to the other soil well uh, first of all uh, first of all I will introduce maybe the Sicily because yes please we talk about Sicily as a region uh, as a viticultural region but actually this is much more like a continent because it's, it's very diversified. There is a lot of di diversity, uh, a lot of variables in, uh, in the case of viticulture. So, for example, uh, we talk about Pantelleria, that is a volcanic island in the middle of the Mediterranean Channel, where there is no uh, tap water, so no water for irrigation, and a, uh, a unique uh, trellis system, which is the Alberello Pantesco, it is protected by the UNESCO. It's a bush vine uh, with uh, it's a, it's a it is almost uh, it grows almost uh, at uh, 30 to 50 centimeters from the from the ground, and it's uh, it's the uni the only way to cultivate in the highland uh, with the fruit terraces. So it's a heroic viticulture okay. in a volcanic area. So this is a very uh, important. So this is uh, uh, in Etna. You will find uh, again uh, volcanic terroir, but we are uh, in a much more continental condition, at 700 up to 850 meters above sea level. We are in the northern side, uh, northern slope of Etna, which is the most uh, qualitative, if you want, um, thanks to a combination of. Uh, uh, factors, which is the wind and the protection on the south from the Etna and the north to the Nebrodi mountains. So that uh, mitigate the effect of, uh, of, the, of the rainfall. Uh, also, the volcanic soils are very draining, so it helps the maturation of this, uh, uh, of local varieties. And then we have other differences in, for example, in the southeastern side uh, with Victoria, uh, we re where the only DOCG of Sicily is, that is Cerasuolo di Vittoria. These are a different uh, terroir based uh, on uh, marine deposits, so sandy calcareous soil or derived from tuff and uh, loamy in the lower, uh, lower um, uh, altitude. So we rise from, since uh, we are from uh, 50 to 80 to 100 meters above sea level and they um, we have a lot of differences also inside this uh, this area is the sunniest 
uh, area for, for Sicily, so the, also the driest. And then we also have another territory that is Contessa Entellina inland, 300 to 400 meters above sea level, even 500 as some peak uh, in, uh, even high in more inland, with a lot of uh, temperature shift between the day and the night, one hour driving from the sea, so you have also the mitigating impact of, uh, of the sea, of the saline uh, air, saline sea breeds, and uh, deeper soil, much more uh, clay, clayish soil, so some deep clay to um, clay calcareous soil. Uh, so these are, and this will give a lot of differences in terms of, uh, of, uh, of style of wines. If you add another um, variable, which are the varieties, the local varieties, then you will uh, implement the complexity of Sicily uh, and implement this mosaic. So, for example, we have uh, Zibibo or Moscato of Alexandria in Pantelleria, which is a unique uh, uh, Muscat grape. We have uh, uh, local varieties Nerello Mascalese for red and Carricante for white in Etna. We have uh, in Vittoria Nero Davola and Frappato as a red, wine, red varieties. And in Contessa Entellina we have much more varieties planted, not only local varieties uh, white such as Catarratto, Inzolia, Grecanico and Grillo, but also international varieties, a lot of Chardonnay plantings, uh, Viognier, Sauvignon Blanc, which is uh, because it's a place for, uh, historically, a, a place for us uh, for research and experimentation. Uh, and a lot of French varieties together with Nero Davola and, uh, and Nocera, for example. So this is just in few words, uh, part of the complexity of Sicily. Wow, it is pretty complex. Michael has a question. He wants to know, do you use rocks to protect the vines from the winds? And also, do you know how deep the roots grow? Okay, we can talk, for example, of Pantelleria. Uh, we have, uh, in 2016, we have uh, dig uh, um, to build our winery, a new winery. And we have, uh, um, we have uh, found roots in these volcanic soils up to uh, 50 meters. That is incredible. Wow. And uh, because it's a very sandy, porous soil and uh, vines need to go deeper to find the moisture. And uh, another uh, the way to protect uh, from the wind, especially in Pantelleria, because we have two main winds that are the Mistral and the Scirocco, uh, we protect by uh, creating some, uh, uh, we dig some hole close to the vine just to protect uh, the, the vine from the, from the wind and to concentrate the humidity from the night. So you can maybe find some uh, picture of Zibibo or in our website of, of this uh, early system, which is uh, quite impressive and uh, actually hard to manage. But it's, uh, these are like uh, some holes uh, that we dig manually uh, to, 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 to protect vines from the wind. Um, we think, uh, the rocks are employed in the terraces. Well, we take care of the management of, of, the, um, of the yeah management of dry walls for more than six, six kilometers of dry wall, dry stone walls. Mm-hmm. And this Part, it is partially uh, act as a protector of uh, of the wind, and uh, in the worst scenario, where we have the highest uh, wind in the um, subjected contrada, we call contrada, which are the like uh, MGA, we can uh, put some barrier uh, from uh, um, it's like an okay, no cane, it's a bamboo bamboo shelters inside the vineyards. Yes, we, cool. we need at some at some point we need some protection from the wind. Very cool. It's like um, in Lanzarote uh, on the Canary yes. Islands, they build those holes. And, yeah. Not and, at this point. Not at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Not 
but uh, quite heroic at the same time. That is that is amazing. That is amazing. And for those who are listening, uh, the I converted the meters, so that would be roots that are about 165 feet long. For that's us pretty long. Are. Yes, that's pretty yes. deep. Yeah. yeah. When uh, one time that I was in Spain, we were at uh, Villa Elena, and they actually have one of the roots that they found um, that's actually on their building, and so it's it goes all the way up the top of the building and spreads out to, you know, they've like kind of stuck it there or, you know, they, it's, it's amazing to think that these roots can, can travel that far um, to, to find their water and to find the nutrients that they need. It's, a, it's impressive. The things that go on that we can't see. Donna Fugata uh, labels, they're always so beautiful. So for example, on our Bella Asse here, okay. mm -hmm. Um, can you tell us, like, what's the story behind them? Why, you know, they all have, I honestly think that whenever I look online or I see bottles and I see a label, I know it's Donna Fogata because even though it's different, you know, images, there's that consistency between it that I always recognize. And I also think to add on to that, where does the name come from? Okay, so, um, so there is, yes, it's true. There is always uh, an history be, with each uh, labels. And it's also true that our labels may be distinguished from the shelves, from the crowd. Uh, this is uh, quite a positive uh, marketing uh, side, if you want. But uh, what is interesting, so for example, from Bella Sai, there is always a research. And uh, Gabriella, She's the leader in this, uh, in building the, uh, the, the history of a label. First of all, the name, Belassai. Belassai is uh, one of the most the noble family of Vittoria. This was a research done by Gabriella uh, when we decided to launch this, uh, this new adventure in, uh, in, uh, in Vittoria. So Belassai, that uh, uh, also it it means uh, uh, too sweet, no sweet. It's uh, uh, too beautiful, very beautiful. It's so it's a nice meaning uh, for an historical, uh, also an historical meaning and link with the territory. And then, if you want the uh, the label, uh, also remember the the peculiarities of the variety and the peculiarities okay. stylistical. Peculiarities ah. of the <laughs> wine. So you can find uh, strawberries, the lavender, uh, the cherry, uh, all these uh, little fruit and uh, and aromas that we sh should remind you the the variety. And then uh, each label is a piece of art because uh, uh, the painter is a famous uh, artist, which is Stefano Vitale is uh, from Veneto and this is a long, uh, there is a long uh, partnership with Gabriella, friendship first of all with uh, Gabriella and uh, he started the, the first uh, label La Fuga in, uh, in 1991 uh, in Italy which was quite uh, uh, astonishing for this time where uh, each label was uh, basic so the first label was a face of a woman, an escaping woman, so Donna Fugata. And uh, this was quite shocking for the market. But now we saw so the perseverance and the, the desire of, of Gabriella to distinguish. And these are the results. Beautiful. Yeah. We, we have another, sorry, we have another question from um, our viewers, Joanne. We like to know now that the trend to enjoy lighter wines. Do you anticipate producing more for pot, though? Uh, so the, the the first, I have understood the um, the entrance, but the question is, do you? So do do you anticipate Donna Fagata producing more frappato or more wines like the frappato, the lighter styled wines? Well, actually. Uh, the adventure, the challenge in in um, in Vittoria was a desire of Donna Fugata because of the unique uh, peculiarities of this area. 
So already uh, we have discovered, we have understood that uh, Frappato is different. Frappato is very light, perfumed, aromatic. Uh, so this was exactly, there was a missing in our uh, range and it was typical, a typical wine from a local variety. So we wanted to focus on it, not because of the market, okay. but because of our, uh, because uh, cover this uh, historical place uh, and uh, typical production. So we are trying to work on this direction and to respect uh, the typicity of, uh, of Frappato and the typicity of Cerasuolo. As for the typicity of Etna and the other part where we work on. So your wines um, are all, you know, still confirmed as the most award, awarded nationally and internationally. Um, that's quite an accomplishment. So, you know, congratulations on that. Yeah. You know, kudos to you. Um, it, go ahead, like, Lori. I used to say, so like, it's, it's not, it's not just a one hit wonder. You are producing wine after wine with incredible ratings and incredible, you know, awards. So is that, how much, you know, there's always the, the, you can't make great wine from bad grapes type thing, but you know, is how much do you do in that, in the winery to this fruit? Or are you just basically it, that's just the phenomenal terroir that Donna Fogata has found and the, the plantings. Well, I would say, uh, first of all, you need a, absolutely uh, perfect grapes to produce so healthy good grapes from the great from the best terroir to produce something uh, uh, something distinguishable and something that uh, uh, consumers can um, can remember so I think this is I mean Dona Fugada since 2010. I always counted, so every harvest is different. So you have to manage this uh, variability year by year. But I can tell you that um, I can confirm that the pursuit of quality is a never ending process. Uh, sometimes you reach the perfect goal, sometimes not. But at the end, you uh, you understand from, the, from this uh, also from the bad vintages or from the, the mistakes that you do and you try to improve the, the quality of the year or the following year. So but sometimes we get some reward from it. So we are happy for <laughs> at the same time. Now, Donna Fogata has a state fruit. Do you also source fruit? And how do you find those vineyards that you have these relationships with? Well, we have... Uh, uh, planted in uh, in Sicily, we have uh, more than 400 hectares now. So most of the production is uh, comes from our estate. So, for example, 70 uh, 70 hectares in Etna, around 40 in uh, in Vittoria, another 40 something in uh, in Etna. Uh, so it's quite important. Uh, our surface is important for our production. Then. Uh, sometimes we need to um, to follow some uh, supplier, some old suppliers, uh, old contractors, uh, where we follow the the quality. We follow first of all the vineyards, and we decide what to do during harvest time, from the perfect picking time. Uh, so it's a long history with the with the historical supplier. In case of we don't have enough. Uh, um, enough grapes for for our wine. For example, in uh, in Victoria, we have uh, new plantings. We still don't have uh, mm, enough grapes, so we need to ask su some supplier. And the same for, for in uh, Etna, this is even more interesting because uh, um, some supplier very old uh, vineyards. So this can be interesting also in this in this uh, sense. Uh, so yes, but we try to concentrate uh, in our under our control, uh, not only our vineyards but also the vineyards from from uh, the suppliers. In the case of, of them. So because you have 
um, wineries in, in the four different areas of Sicily, do they each specialize in a specific wine style, a specific grape? You know, are they different? Do they, they process in that area or do you bring them all to one major right. place to process? Well, as I said, uh, um, if you want, we get the same approach across these territories. Uh, but the, um, the several variabilities inside uh, this land uh, um, already makes make the differences. It's, it's uh, impossible to replicate the same uh, things in this area. So uh, climate, soils, altitude and exposure, and then you had uh, the variability, the, the local varieties which are different and if you add also the when making approach that can change so we try to differentiate but the nature of the things the nature of the terroir already guide us uh, through um, a direction that uh, uh, also led to a different road compared to another territory i will tell you one example um, we grow Nero Davola both in Vittoria and in Contessentellina, but they are completely different. Uh, Nero Davola from uh, the, this deep clay soil, this calcareous soil, has a uh, deep color, um, dark, um, dark berry, so dark and blue berry aromas, and uh, more spicy, well, for, and a lot of tannins. While, uh, for example, the Nero Davola from Vittoria, which, we, which uh, where we produce also a single uh, Nero Davola, Vittoria DOC, is definitely paler in color, much more lifted in aromatics, uh, and with uh, also uh, high acidity, but lovely freshness and soft, soft tannins. So two completely different styles, uh, which cannot, we, we cannot replicate things. Now, are you are you, you have the different areas, but are you processing in a single facility? Because you just built right recently built a new winery. Right? So, are you processing in a single winery, or do each of these locations have their own processing? Okay, uh, each territory has its own winery, its own uh, uh, winery to process the grapes. This is due in order to uh, shorten the time between uh, the picking and the uh, maceration on the processing of the, of the varieties, of the grapes, to reduce oxidation because we are in a Mediterranean quite sub-desertic area across Sicily, most of it is sub-desert. So oxidation, temperature, uh, we can get much more control by having the vineyards close to the winery. So we have a winery to, to process the grape in Contessentellina, one in Pantelleria for the Zibibo grapes, one in Vittoria that we have built in 2018, so just brand new, and one uh, winery in Etna. And it is, was a, a, an ancient, it was a, a winery from a few producers. So it's kind of a small cooperative, which we have uh, restored according to our desire. So it's, it, nowadays it's a very, uh, very um, interesting place to work with. And there is another complication, or if you want, uh, a necessary uh, legislation uh, rule that, uh, um, that require the processing, but also the vinification and the bottling in the specific area of production. So for example, we bottle uh, Etna DOC in uh, Randazzo, in the area of production. We bottle uh, um, Cerasuolo di Vittoria in Vittoria, in Acate, where is our winery is. And the same in Contessentelina for the DOC Sicily. Sicily. So do you have um, winemakers in each of these areas as well? And now a word from our sponsor. Did you know that Dracina Wines has a wine club? We named it the Chalk Club. Draco is on our label, but Vegas was getting a bit jealous, so we decided he deserved to be our wine club spokesdog. 
In Las Vegas, betting chalk means that you are betting on all of the favorites, and we're gambling that once you taste our wines, we will become one of your favorite wineries. The club is simple, yet a bit different than most. We don't ask for a lot of commitment like others do. Choose between three tiers. The Sweet 16, where you'll receive three bottles twice a year and get 25% off all orders. Sign up for the Elite 8 and get 30% off all orders and receive four bottles twice a year. Or make it to the Final Four and receive six bottles twice a year, as well as receiving 35% off all purchases. All tiers receive discounted shipping, are customizable, and are eligible for unlimited referral bonuses. Add $15 to your bank for each person you refer. Head to www.dracinawines.com or the link in the show notes to find out all the Chalk Club has to offer and to sign up. We've stopped the odds so that you can get our award-winning wines without breaking the bank. Uh, we are two, um, let's say, old winemakers, uh, senior winemakers in, uh, in Marsala. In Marsala, we have also the headquarter of the technical, direct, technical uh, department, where we have the laboratory for the quality control. And we try to concentrate the decision here in Marsala. So we have almost each day uh, the samples from uh, all the wineries in, in Marsala to decide uh, what we have, what we okay. have to do with the grapes. And uh, this is a, a random question, but how far apart are each of these areas? So imagine uh, in Mar Marsala to Pantelleria, it's, one, it's 40 minutes flight. Oh. Or six hours by, by boat, six hours by ferry boat. Uh, Victoria is three hour and a half, three hour um, from Marsala, and Etna is four hour driving. Oh so wow, that's pretty spread out. Long, <laughs> long, that long would distance. be that would be very difficult on the grapes. Get into yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Wow, wow. Well, we are ready to talk about this wine, go a little bit more in depth into this wine. So once again, we have uh, Donna Fagata Balassi, Vittoria D.O.C. Frappato from Sicilia. And let's talk about this, this wine. We have um, vintage 2020 is what we are tasting. It is very fresh. Yes. It is. It is very fresh. And, you know, I have to say, I thought the label was beautiful, but I didn't catch on that it was what you get out of the wine. Like, that, that is so clever. It, it really is clever. Um, it is, so tell us about yes, how you right. made this wine, the processing that it went through. Um, I'm assuming, although I learned a long time ago, you shouldn't assume, but mostly stainless because of the freshness. So how do you produce this fruit or produce this wine? So Frappato, so comes from our estate, again, it's some uh, few suppliers. <coughs> we, um, we distem the grapes and we put inside the vats, so only stainless steel vats. We try to um, reach a temperature of 20, uh, um, well, of 40, to 16 degrees at the beginning. So once you distem, then all these uh, pomas go inside an heat ex exchanger. It's called the heat exchanger, uh, which uh, uh, cool the grapes. So cool the pomas up to 14, 16 degrees. Uh, we by with this uh, with this process we can uh, we can allow the grapes to make a short uh, cold soak. Okay. Of uh, two to three days, and uh, this cold soak uh, help us to achieve more uh, aromatics, uh, more stability of the color. So it's a cold soak. In, it's a uh, it's a period in which uh, fermentation doesn't start, but you extract in an aquos aquosus phases. So you you extract antochans. You start you extract color and aromas from. On the skin and then we let the temperature rise up to 24 to 26 degrees 
for uh, so for the fermentation and the maceration with the skins so with this thomas uh, took up to uh, eight to ten days no more because uh, um, you, we don't have to extract too much from this uh, uh, from this pomace. You don't have too much tannins to extract. It's very delicate. While uh, if you uh, if you uh, go too long on the extraction, on the maceration, you will lose maybe the more fresher aromas, the primary aromas of the variety. So we try to keep it uh, more tighter and and uh, closer to the to the to the wine. And uh, so we um, rack, so we separate the wine at the end of the fermentation, this maceration from the pomas. And uh, we have the malolactic fermentation that is done again in stainless steel. Uh, and it is for we bottle this, we age uh, this wine for four months, or more or less four to six months. And one more uh, uh, passage in uh, in bottle before the release. So the idea is to concentrate the aromatics, the delicacy of the variety, on the bottle, and just to keep it uh, more on it. And for this is the reason of the stainless steel is the only way to preserve the, the freshness, while the oak will cover. Uh, this uh, this aromas, this uh, delicacy, and will give uh, uh, another style of frappato, which is for us is not uh, uh, interesting. I, interesting is a wonderful word for it because I, mm -hmm. to me, it is so fresh. It is um, the 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 acidity is is kind of like medium in there um it's not it's not overly salivating but it's definitely holding the structure together um and i'm i'm getting like a little bit it, the image is showing strawberries i'm getting a little bit of darker darker fruit than that but very bright uh darker fruit and there's something in there that i um deb i don't know if you could help me out there's there is a, a note that is absolutely beautiful, but my brain is not telling me what what it is. On the is. nose, I kind of get like a on the finish a mellow spice. Yes, that's what I can't figure out exactly. I don't know what is. it is. It's not like a cinnamon, and it's not clothes. a nutmeg. No, yeah. but there's a soft a soft spice. That's the best way that I can. Describe okay. it, Pietro, What do you, what do you get when you taste this wine? Well, I will uh, I will add uh, also some um, floral side in the nose. Yes. So yes. Rose petal, violet. Uh, it's very, as you said, bright. I like bright, uh, uh, fruity aromas and mm. uh, that your verbal uh, lift kind of mintedness too. And then in the palate, uh, um, as you said. Uh, Acidity is not high, it's more medium, uh, but there is a lovely freshness to the palate. It's uh, refreshing with the uh, juicy, soft tannins, quite uh, low tannic profile. Yes. And the uh, palate, again, the aftertaste is again on the fruit, uh, on the floral side. And this, this spiciness, again, of cinnamon that you said, uh, but a, a lot of fruit uh, coming up in uh, coming again in the in the palate. It is beautiful. It is a nice for those. Um, so we have a couple of people who said that they actually did hunt around for frappato. Poor poor Michael drove all over uh, trying to find it and couldn't find any frappato. Um, so he's he's asking if you know where it gets distributed in. Uh, in the western coast uh, in California um, but uh, we can probably find that out and get that to Michael later uh, but it but is uh, it's easy easy to get you have a web locator uh, on our website there you oh, go perfect. Michael you go. <laughs> I can't ask for easier than that <laughs> that that is perfect maybe you would have saved some gas if you had looked there first <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Poor Michael, there's nothing near him. He's got to drive very far to get to anywhere. Um, so, but yes, it is a beautiful wine that is light and yeah. just enjoyable. I, I think that it can, you know, you can just sit and enjoy the day with. I'm really with liking this and, and it's one o'clock here, one thirty now. So <laughs> <laughs> day <that's> on. <laughs> Now, there there has been some thought of that uh, Frappato actually originated in the Iberian Peninsula and then made its way over to Sicily. And then others believe that Ragusa is its homeland. So what are what are your thoughts on that? OK, my, my thoughts are based on the on the research of, of the of that is an historian, but also um, Ampelographist, I don't know if it is. Ampelography. Ampelography has done uh, just recently. So, uh, from a genetic st uh, standpoint, uh, Frappato should be the son of uh, Sangiovese. Ah. So, Sangiovese, the father, and uh, Frappato is a direct son of, uh, of, uh, San Gio of Sangiovese. And for example, a uh, brother of Frappato is the Gaglioppo from, from, uh, from uh, Calabria, another red, uh, ancient red variety. So this means uh, that uh, this is a local variety. It's a local variety. It's a native variety. And uh, this is also supported by uh, the history by the writers uh, of the 70, because uh, it was described already during the 17th century in Sicily, cultivated in the, um, among Ragusa province, especially in Ragusa and Syracuse province, but it is with the focus on Victoria already at those time. So this amplifies the suggestion, the idea that this is uh, an old native variety from Sicily and not from uh, other places. At least for Frappato, we can say this. <laughs> Beautiful. And then we do have a question from Karen. Um, she wants to know, you discussed that the Frappato is made in stainless steel, but she's curious if you make all of your red grapes processed through stainless steel, or are some of your other wines, red wines, using oak? So in terms of maceration, so the fermentation took place always in stainless steel, while for some uh, varieties, some styles, we prefer the aging in uh, barriques. Okay. Uh, second passage barriques, second third passage barriques, for example, for an, an for uh, Nerello Mascalese in Etna, on our red Etna DOC because uh, Nerello needs, it's a much more tannic variety that needs to, to smooth, but we use more neutral oak, neutral seasoned barriques, uh, uh, just to don't cover too much the aromatics that are delicate and to don't ox uh, oxidate because it's a very delicate variety. While, for example, uh, reds from Contessant Alina are much more structured, fuller bodied, more tannic, and these grapes require some aging in oak, new French barriques, uh, such as for ne Nero Davola, uh, or our Syrah blend, uh, which is the Milona Notte. It's 100% new French barriques for 14 uh, months. So we um, differentiate the process, we differentiate the method of production according to the winemaking needs and according to the style that we want to produce. Beautiful. Thank you. So Frappato is mostly found in the southeastern coast of Sicily. Is it grown anywhere else in Italy or even the world? I, I would say no. I mean, yeah. it's uh, at least up to, up to today, I you know it's only cultivated in Sicily. Uh, you used to have the provinces of uh, Ragus and Syracuse uh, as historical places. Now we found a little bit, it's, we have around uh, a dozen hectares in, in Sicily, across Sicily. Uh, but we have some plantings, uh, some vineyards uh, in other provinces, such as Trapani and Palermo. But uh, 
the core vineyards are really in uh, across Victoria, in the Victoria area of the DOCG, Chelsea uh, Victoria and DOC Victoria. So it's pretty much in indigenous. World, to in the world, I would say this is a very interesting variety for climate change to respond to climate change. So maybe uh, people can uh, or winemakers from all over the world can look at it as they have already done uh, for Nero Daula in uh, Australia and in California also, or with San Fiano or, San, or Catarato plantings across the world. Uh, I will say um, Frappato can respond uh, very well to draft by keeping a lot of uh, natural acidity and keeping its freshness. So also in sandy soils and with the draft subdesertic condition, uh, such as in Sicily, southeastern side, we still have such a pleasant, enjoyable wine uh, and delicate with an, an, an unexpected uh, delicacy and freshness. And so you, you actually just answered my next question of to what is the climate that Frappato likes? It, do, yeah. it does like and soil. Oh, yeah. And, and you had said sandy soil. So uh, are these, a, you said these are bush vines. So are they on natural roots since it's sandy? Did they uh, not get you can find You can find both uh, bush vine and uh, vertical shoot position, some VSP okay. uh, canopy. We have predominantly um, vertical shoot position and uh, two types, two main types of soil, which are the sandy soils uh, upper on the hills okay. uh, or in the lower parts are uh, more loamy soil. This give a uh, uh, place to two different styles of uh, frappato, but these are the predominant. While in clay soil, uh, it doesn't uh, act so well. Is it early or late wet ripening the grape? It has a quite longer um, phenological uh, season, so I will say I would say it's uh, it, it has a longer ripening season. So it's a late uh, late early. ripening. So when early, late, right? In a, in a perfect world, when would you typically uh, harvest it? We are picking now. You're picking now, okay. So if you think that we are picking now in Acate, we have almost finished in Contessentellina. So okay. uh, for Ari, we have already um, 40 days more than this. Uh, so 50, more than 50, 55 to 60 uh, days of uh, picking. Wow. And we have just started to pick uh, Frappato. Okay. So it's a late ripening variety. Okay. And now it's known to have um, tight clusters. So does this lend itself to being mold, mildew, you know, you predisposed to it? Like what are some of the concerns in the vineyard? And then what are some of the concerns in the winery? Is it oxidate? Is it prone to oxidation? What are what are your concerns as you're making it? So the main, the main concern for viticulture, uh, for viticulturalists is that uh, it's a low yielding variety. So this is the main <laughs> issue for, from a productive uh, point of view. Uh, again, the fact that it produces low, it is a compact, small bunches and quite compact. And when yields are low, uh, vines tend to compensate uh, uh, these bunches. So by enlarging the berries. So it naturally, uh, increase the size of the berries and this in this compact bunches then it tends to uh, uh, to open to to crush to and uh, and to enter the rot and to enter mold uh, so this is quite prone to rot to gray rot uh, so we need a lot of um, a lot of work in the vineyard well a lot First of all, you need to plant in the right places. So not too much uh, water. Uh, so the control of vigor is important. Then the, the leafing is important also to increase the, the air circulation uh, across the bunch zone. And one of the uh, positive things for, in terms of viticulture, it, it has a very vertical shape of, 
in the canopy. So it's one of the unique, one of the only varieties that has a very vertical shape uh, uh, that help also this uh, um, air circulation and mitigating, reducing the risk of, uh, of botrytis. And then for sure, the, the risk uh, in terms of way making, this is a variety that is due to this delicacy and this uh, dominated primary aromas, it's a variety that with a high tendency to oxidation. Oh. So for this reason, we pick only with the small crates or uh, in beans and uh, fast processing and only stainless steel with uh, um, using inert gases to preserve from oxygen in intake. Oh. It's very important. Very, very then uh, in another uh, one, one of the maybe uh, attendance, uh, so Frappato's attendance as a during winemaking to reduction. So after the fermentation, it tends to go into off flavors such as reduction on rotten eggs and uh, cabbage. Uh, so it's also always a, a delicate play of the winemakers to counterbalance the risk of oxidation and the risk of uh, mercantiles of off flavor, uh, which can derivate from reduction. Wow. So maybe we do uh, one more racking to uh, avoid uh, gross leaves and so on. And <laughs> wow. Wow. Stressful. Yeah, very. <laughs> um, so Frappato is blended with Nero Davla to produce Sicily's only DOCG uh, wine, Sarah, and I probably can't pronounce this right, Sarah Solo di Vittoria. Sarah yeah, Solo di Vittoria, yeah. Okay, there you go. Um, <laughs> what is the percentage that each wine contributes? And does it vary every year depending on, you know, the harvest and, and what the grape spring, or is it has to be a certain percentage of each wine every year? Yeah, the percentage is uh, fixed by the rule, but the highest percentage is fixed by the rule of Frappato inside the Cerasolo di Vittoria, which is 40% maximum of Frappato and 60% Nero Davola. Oh, okay. So you can get more Nero Davola than this, but no more Frappato than 40%. So it can change every year, but it can't be more than 40% and Definitely, yes. potato and, and more than 60 It can change uh, and we change uh, the percentage according to the style also that we want. Mm -hmm. According to the uh, stylistic uh, um, guide of the year, uh, we, because uh, the blending part that is Nero Daola is quite, uh, it's really at the opposite of Frappato. It play more on the fruit, on the red and black fruit. It has a lot of acidity, quite high acidity and uh, mm, more uh, higher tannins too. So the blending partner, Frappato, because uh, it adds more delicacy, more floral aromas, it is smooth, the acidity, and it resolves a bit the palate texture. It, it makes more approachable and more complex at the same time, but no more than 40%. While you can get 100% uh, uh, frappato in a Victoria DOC, which is yeah. uh, Bella Sai that we are testing now. Mm -hmm. And then, can you do a Nero Davola in Vittoria? You can also do a Nero Davola uh, Vittoria DOC, uh, and we produce another label, in fact, um, which is Passi per du, uh, which is uh, Contesa de Venti, that we launched uh, in uh, Dust uh, in Italy in, uh, in uh, the beginning of April. Okay. So, so we will focus uh, on the single varieties, Nero Davola, Frappato from Vittoria DOC, and then the blend, that is, which is the historical, uh, the, typical, the most typical uh, way of production of the, in the area, which is the blend of Nero Davola and Frappato. 
Okay, perfect. So, so to clarify to everybody, what we are drinking, the Donna forgot the Belasai is 100% frappato. So this is, this is from the Vittoria DOC. So this is allowed to be frappato, where the Cerasuelo Vittoria DOC has to be DOC the blend. Green. Has to be the blend. Perfect. Perfect. And that's the only, I believe, DOCG in Sicily? It's the only, yes. Yes. True. Yes. True. So I read that the guyout method of pruning is used for frappato. Can you explain that? What type of pruning um, that is? Yes, yes. Type of pruning, okay. We we mostly prune, uh, so, so which, you mean which kind of pruning we apply for, uh, for the- so, Yes, so like how many buds are you cutting back to? Okay, okay. so Frappato, as I said, um, given the fact that it's a, a compact bunch, as compact bunch, uh, for this variety, we prefer to use the Guyot, mm -hmm. Guyot uh, method of pruning. Guyot method of pruning is a, is a method where you have a permanent trunk, a cane of six to eight uh, buds, which is the fruit, fruitful uh, area. This cane will produce uh, the shoots, which are with the fruits. And then uh, a small pour, a spur with two buds at the opposite side. So uh, one side the spur and on the other side the cane, which is uh, um, attached to the wire of the, of the trellis system. And on the spur we have two buds and this is to renovate the next year the cane. So from so the next year you will cut the long cane and from the two shoots that you have uh, on the spur, you will uh, reestablish one, one long cane that you will put again in the same direction. And you will have again, you reestablish the spur with two buds. Okay. It so looks complicated. It looks complicated, but it's uh, actually, it's, visually, it's much more easy. Is that like and, the Vara and Polgar in, in Jerez? Right. Okay, yes. that's, what I, that's what I was associating it with. Yes. Yeah. The Guyot is probably the most diffused together with the uh, cordon spurred, uh, cordon spurred uh, vertical shoot position. So the this is so we prefer this uh, um, this pruning system because uh, it produces uh, looser bunches compared to the uh, cordon spurred pruning system. The cordon spur is where you have a, a permanent trunk, an horizontal, so you, you have the vertical part and then the horizontal trunk per, with a permanent, which is the permanent, right. the old trees, if you want, the old uh, wood, Quite where right. each uh, 15 to 20 centimeters, you have a, a short spur of two to three buds, okay? And you renovate year by year the spur by cutting uh, on top. This produces, uh, uh, if you want, more uh, balanced dimension of uh, of bunches, but more compact, smaller and more compact, which is not, uh, in, which is uh, which can be risky in the case of uh, frappato. Okay, awesome. And then, so. We're enjoying this wine, and as I said, you can just sit back and enjoy the day with the frappato. But what what do you suggest pairing? What what are some of your favorite pairings with the frappato? So first of all, the, the peculiarities, the freshness, so, uh, this delicacy of aromas allow. It's an unusual red because allow to chill it a bit. Mm -hmm. You can uh, you can chill a bit. So if uh, normal temperature for red it's uh, 16 to 18 degrees, maybe you can chill uh, at 14 degrees Celsius, 15 to 16, uh, uh, 14 15 degrees Celsius to enjoy this freshness. So you can have by with appetizer, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Sicilian entrees, uh, maybe some caponata, some vegetable uh, with. Um, 
it's a uh, cooked vegetable with uh, which are sour and bitter thanks to the vinegar sweet and, and bitter sorry uh thanks to the the vinegar or you can uh, you can even uh, pair with uh, savory pasta dishes mm. as the first courses easily with the uh, most with the uh, anchovy pasta from uh, from Palermo, if you want, or uh, you can go up to um, up to the dish, up to the fishes, so fish curds, and fish curds can be tuna. We have done a lot of pairings in the winery to show to consumers, to show to our client clients, that it's a red that you can pair with the fish, okay. and even with an important fish like the red tuna. Which is typical again from uh, from the Mediterranean from here in Marsala, uh, but also swordfish or other blue um, blue fishes. So it's a very uh, polyedric, flexible variety, a flexible wine to pair with. You can enjoy uh, with your by in your boat uh, during summertime. Uh, just without nothing. I mean. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Mm. I'm enjoying it. So what would be the three takeaways that you would want people to remember about Frappato as we start to wind down this uh, webinar and podcast? Well, this, uh, I think, first of all, the peculiarities of the variety. So, uh, it's unique style. This uh, floral attitude, this delicacy of aromas, and um, and the pleasant is very approachable. I will not say that it's a crowd pleasing please, pleaser, but it has um, quite um, an approach. It has a character that can be understood by the consumers, by a lot of consumers. Uh, the most engaged consumers by people who love, uh, who fall in love with Gamay or Pinot Noir like mm -hmm. style, but also uh, people who don't usually don't drink wine, but can be attracted by the uh, the easy aromas mm -hmm. that can remind. Also, the fact that it's smooth and with a soft acidity. And this uh, and soft tannins, that this can be much more approachable also for novices. So I think this is one of the most important uh, things. Uh, pairings, I think this is another characteristic of the variety that I will uh, focus on. So you can enjoy by itself, but you can enjoy also with uh, uh, with something more uh, distinctive, more craftful, uh, more savory. Um, that is not maybe typical for a red wine and uh, serve the chill. So uh, Karen um, actually just returned from Italy where they she found that they served red wines chilled, even like really bold red wines. Do they serve, she wants to know if they serve uh, red chilled in Sicily and is this a new trend to serve red wines chilled? Uh, I think you can chill the right red. Uh, I will not chill every red because uh, if you if you go with a fuller bodied deep uh, and uh, tannic varieties and tannic wines, then you will uh, right. lose the pleasure. Right. You will have much more uh, astringency and you will lose also the aromatics. While this is already uh, much more uh, undertone in a positive way, much more um, it is a subdued aromas that go well with also a few degrees uh, of temperature. And, uh, and then the third uh, uh, takeaway, this is a local variety and this variety responds very well to climate change. Mm. So it's a sustainable variety. And these are sustainable wines produced from a uh, uh, unique terroir. So this respect the area of production, this respect uh, also the, um, 
the place and the people who work in this area uh, because they are still growing something that is from their place. We don't need to adapt, but because already Frappato is adapted to this condition and uh, it's resistant to draft with very uh, low water input in the vineyard. And uh, I mean, it's a, it's a pleasure to drink. <laughs> and with the with the um the medium acid and lower tannin what is your recommended uh drink window how long uh do you think okay. frappato can yeah this is an important question uh i will uh, i will not talk too much these wines i will enjoy uh this wine in their use up to one year and a half maybe two years this will be still drinkable, will still enjoyable in the fruit, in the, uh, in the primary aromas. Uh, I will not go further. We have much more uh, structured wines for for keeping in your wine cellar. So, <laughs> just a want. question though, because this is a a twenty twenty. So, by your processing, right, you're holding it for like six months and then six months in barrel. So. Is this your current release or is 2021 also out, out there? Yeah, 2020 is still in uh, good shape, actually. Oh, it's in beautiful shape. Yes. But yeah. is, is 2021 released already? Yes. Yeah, uh, it will be uh, in the US, uh, not sure, it, because we have released uh, recently in Italy, so it will be a little delayed to get to this. In the maybe for autumn, uh, the next. Well, uh, winter probably in uh, or even earlier in yeah, the US. Well, for the I mean uh, for me this 2020 it's beautiful it's definitely yes, in in a prime we can say three prime. years but drink uh, uh, don't talk too much this wine and enjoy enjoy the, now mm -hmm. yeah enjoy well, you've already told us that. So for everybody who would like to find out more about um, Donna Fogata, you can go to their website, which I believe is just donnafogata.com. And I know it has English and, and Italian up there. So you can just click for us. We can just click Italian. I mean, English. <laughs> <laughs> you can click Italian. We can click Italian. Um, you can learn Italian. Also <laughs> German. Also in German. Uh, and German, okay. And um, so they can find that out. There is, we learned that there is the locator. So you can find out where they are, where the wines are found. And for the people in the chat, I will reach out to the PR company to find out specifically where you are because a couple of them are getting not available in your area. So maybe we can find out how they can get their hands on this wonderful wine. And, you know, Pedro, I just want to say thank you so much. Yes, for thank you. Joining Sorry us, about the dog barking. <laughs> joining us in this very hectic time and uh, raise a glass to a fantastic and very successful remainder of your harvest. Yes. And thank you for sharing Frapato with us. Yes, Chin thank in. you. I hope you Have enjoy your wine. Cheers. 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 You are special. This has been another episode of Exploring the Wine Glass. Thanks for listening. If you have suggestions on what topics you would like me to discuss, please reach out on social media. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Exploring the Wine Glass. I am also on LinkedIn as Lori Hoyt Bud. Of course, you can always email me at exploringthewineglass at gmail.com and sign up for my newsletter at exploringthewineglass.com. If you enjoyed what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe to help others find me more easily. And most importantly, tell your wine-loving friends, because if you like the podcast, they will too. Podcast music is Wine by Kevins. Until next week, slancha. I want to let you go right now. Glass.
right now.